trying to go over and elaborate a little bit what I was saying earlier about basically it, it's not about how much money you can make right now in this market. It's about how much you can reduce your costs per se uh, because you're, you're just not going to make what you were making before, especially if you came into this during 2001, 2002, you're just not going to make that kind of revenue anymore. Um, the $10,000 weeks, the $8,000 weeks are just, they're just, they're just not happening for most guys anymore. And you should start focusing on making the $5,000 weeks. That's, that's going to probably be about the, the norm for, for most guys right now, uh, between four and $5,000. And in order to make that much money, uh, or, or I should say in order to be able to make that much money profitable, I guess you could say, or, or survivable, I guess, you're going to have to reduce your costs. Uh, th those costs are going to be reduced either with, you know, within the truck, within the business, or, or at home. There's, there's no way you're going to be able to survive with how inflation has basically creeped up on us. It, well, I wouldn't even say creep. I would say it's come in like a wrecking ball, to be honest with you. Uh, the tires are double priced still, majority, uh, unless you're buying no name you know, Chinese made tires, and then you take a risk on how long they're gonna wet last, whether or not they're gonna blow out. The same thing with, with buying recaps. Everything, everything, you have to evaluate everything in your business right now and find a way to save money. Whether it's through insurance, through fuel costs, heck, even maybe changing your internet provider, if you're, you know, or your phone, cell phone provider, anything. Uh, those, those little costs add up you know, they just they just do, especially when you know you're already pitching pennies. So there's uh, there's like I said was saying before, there's definitely somebody that comes on my channel and comments all the time about the decisions I made and how a lot of guys put themselves you know in the hole with either huge truck payments or other costs at home. And you know what, he's right. I don't exactly know where he's coming from, but he, he's exactly right. Uh, what I did here was completely and utterly stupid. Uh, in the beginning, it seemed like a great idea, and I thought I was going to have no problems with the truck, which, you know, turns out I, I did have problems with the truck. So far, luckily, nothing, nothing bad's going on right now, and I hope that lasts for at least 100 to 200,000 miles. I, I really don't feel like seeing the dealership anytime soon. That being said, you know, most guys are driving around in used equipment that they've overpaid for, and, and that just simply ain't gonna happen. They're, they're gonna simply have breakdowns. And unless you have lots of money saved up, you know, when the times were good and, and you had no major catastrophic problems, here's a big boy coming by, uh, you're just, you're just going to be screwed. Like I said, you're going to have to figure out how to save money mostly because you're not going to be able to go out there and increase your revenue. That's just not going to happen right now for the majority of guys. I'm not saying it ain't going to happen for everyone, but I mean, realistically, come on. Uh, some of you guys are, are looking at pipe dreams. Like you think that the market's going to automatically come back and things are going to be great. And it doesn't work that way. It's never worked that way. Uh, 2018, you know, we were making three, four dollars a mile. At least I was religiously in flatbed. And near the end of summer, it just the bottom fell out. It just it just fell out into 2019. And the same thing happened then. Not on the scale, and not we didn't have the massive increase in costs like we do now. But it, it's it's pretty pretty much mi mimicking it. And, and like I said, this this market's happened before, just not this rough. Like cost did not double, and then the market fell. But you're just gonna have to work through it. You're gonna have to set yourself up, like I said, to save as much money and pinch as many pennies as you can. I unfortunately I can't do that. I have lots of old debt from when I had, you know, the business, my authority, the two drivers. 
the majority of which is paid off, but I still have I still have payments towards it. It's not gone completely 100% yet. I still have the payment for the 40, 40 uh, yeah, the 9400 International too that I'm paying for on top of the payment for this truck, my insurance. So to be honest, if you if you probably went through and included my debt, like the debt payments into this truck payment and everything, I probably have easily a six thousand dollar maybe maybe more let's see here so five hundred dollars or so well it's almost six hundred dollars for the truck payment that i got lowered uh yeah i'm i'm over six thousand dollars between the truck payment my insurance payment my uh, business debt like i got a couple credit cards that i'm still paying on they're almost paid off like i said but i'm still paying large payments to to pay them off I have the truck. I'm in a very bad place. And, you know, initially when I started out, if you go through my videos from the past couple months when I got this truck, I, I, I was making money hand over fist here uh, with this dedicated carrier. I was still doing $8,000 weeks. And I didn't think that was going to end. Maybe cut back a little bit, but it has cut back a lot more than than it, I would ever have thought it would. Uh, I, sometimes, if I have a good week, I'm up into six, seven thousand dollar gross. You know, if I'm lucky. But lately here, my gross have continuously fallen, and, and they've been very erratic. You know, I might end up having a, another six or seven thousand dollar week again. It's 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 very possible, but. You never know. The next week could be a two or three thousand dollar week. For the let's see, continuously now. I, well, I wouldn't say continuously, but sporadically, I've been, I've been having three or four thousand dollar weeks. I haven't hit six thousand dollars in at least a month. I'm still making it, but then again, it just takes a week where I only gross. Fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars to to push me back. Not, not not including. I'm also I get reimbursed for tolls. So when I when I'm stuck in the Northeast like I've been, all those tolls I pay for out of pocket. Those sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars in tolls I pay for out of pocket. So that money has to come out of my pocket. Then I get reimbursed. Is it usually the first check that I put, you know, put it in for? I mean, not the first check. I should say the first settlement. I keep. Don't ever. If you're an owner operator, don't ever call your settlements checks because they're not. They're not. Don't don't ever look at them or rely on them like checks. Anywho, now that I went off on that tangent, that you know that money is gone. That money gets pulled out automatically out of my business account and goes to prepass and pays those tolls. So now I have to wait one or two settlement cycles, maybe, to get reimbursed. As I'm still racking up tolls into the next uh, week or whatnot, or the next settlement. So if you start having two or three, four weeks where I'm only grossing two or three thousand dollars, it doesn't take long for that money to disappear between the, the truck payment, uh, home expenses, what I'm trying to pay myself. I've been trying to pay myself about a thousand dollars a week now. And it's been very hard because I'm used to paying myself at least fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars a week. And you know the old lady uh, has been accustomed to that money coming in, but it, it just it it is what it is right now. And I, I don't know I don't know how long I can endure only grossing two or three thousand dollars a week between all the other bills I have and. And my my debt, the debt that I owe. So, I guess the the point I'm trying to get across is I know a lot of you guys are trying to chase profit, chase those loads, chase those miles, maybe right now. But maybe you should step back and try to calculate where you can save money, what you can get rid of, what you can sacrifice. Uh, know your costs. Run the numbers. I did a live of a few days ago where I had an app, which I'll probably try to put up on the screen here when I edit this. Use that budgeting app and put in your numbers and 
figure out how much per mile with a calculator it's costing you based on, I don't know, 2,500 miles. The average is 2,500 miles a month. I mean a week, Woo. a week for most guys. So the average is 10,000 miles a month, we'll say. Me, right now, what I do, since I'm stuck in this Northeast kind of run or area, <laughs> there's some weeks now I'm lucky if I do over a thousand miles. It's it's getting that. And that's where I've said the, the $2,000, $3,000 gross weeks are coming in at. And I can't have that. I need to be running. Sure, I'm making like 265 a mile plus or more, uh, de you know, depending on whether or not I get uh, Metro New York bonuses and things like that. And oh, and detention. But it's just, <laughs> it's just not enough when you're running that little mileage with the cost I have. And I never thought, I never thought this would happen. I never thought I'd be in this predicament. The way things start out with this company, and and you know, having a dedicated customer like this, you, I would never in a million years think that Tyson would be shutting down a bunch of extra facilities, slowing down. People got to eat. People eat meat, and, and Tyson's like the number one meat producer in the country. <laughs> uh, you know, they do, they do a lot more than just chicken. I'll tell you that. A lot more than just chicken. Uh, they make those little sandwiches you see in a gas station, and all, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff they make. Uh, sausages, po polo sausage, uh, corn dogs. It, the list goes on. They just they they make it. They manufacture it, or they have the, they they have a subsidiary company that they own manufactures it. And I just you know it, it's it's not even just this carrier. It's other carriers too. I've talked to Holland Bus drivers. I've talked to some prime drivers. Very few come in, at least in the terminal I usually work out, or I should say the, the warehouse, the DC. Uh, but I've talked to them. And, and according to the, most of the prime drivers, prime just in general, uh, loads aren't moving that well. I still have a few contacts from my old prime days that I've reached out and messaged on instant messenger and, and, and text. And I know the one's a, the one's a freaking team team low you know it's him and his wife their team and for almost a month they out of the out of a month they said they got maybe 15 team loads out of an entire month they've been running like super solo or or just regular solo loads and that's prime uh, i've talked to some tyson drivers they said their miles has dropped too you know they're company guys they get a set rate for the most part but still, they're, they're losing out on, on their paychecks. So I don't know, I, I, this is just my little monologue right now of uh, just just trying to help guys out because I'm gonna try to help myself out through this. I don't know where, what, me, I don't know. I could always get rid of like the, the extra $50 a month I pay in, in my internet service for T-Mobile, but then, you know, I'll lose out on my TV. I won't have internet service for for my laptop, for, for uploading the videos, for making videos. Uh, but then again, I haven't really had time to be able to do that. Even though I'm not running any miles, I've been just getting shitty customers that I've had to, you know, endure like like stupid stuff like this. I have to sit there and wait and hope the load's ready. And it's hard to sleep when you're dealing with that. And sure, I could try to sit there and edit videos and, and do things like that, but you're just not in the mood. You don't want to get in the, uh, involved in, in putting the effort into editing and then almost have the video done or whatever you're doing and then end up having to shut the laptop off or whatnot and, and get going down the road and hope you know you can pick it up sometime soon so you can actually put the video out in a relatively decent time but i mean that really has nothing to do with making money or, or anything in truck. and that's just my what what i what i have problems with you know putting youtube videos out and stuff but like I said, I, I could guess I could save an extra fifty dollars a month with not having the AT and T. I mean, not the AT and T, the T-Mobile hotspot up there. You know, is is that really going to be worth my sanity? I don't know. Uh, it, it's a creature comfort. But you know, there's guys that'll. There's guys that you just you got to do what you got to do. Uh, if it gets bad enough, I mean, I guess I can still easily make YouTube videos on my phone. But I mean. If it gets bad enough, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just gonna cut down on the videos. Like, I, I've been trying to 
bring them back to having at least three or four videos a week again. But sometimes when you when you end up having, I, I always said I was going to show every everything. When you end up having bad weeks like this, you just you just don't feel like it. You really don't. And this is going to be a bad week for me. I'm probably going to get three loads in. Luckily, the, I'll, if I if I'm really lucky, they send me back up to Maine. Hopefully, even though I don't like driving through the Northeast and doing all this up this stuff, I I need to get the miles. And I will be working through this weekend most likely. Um, <laughs> it just is what it is, guys. And I know I got haters and I got people that nitpick everything I do. And I'm not saying what I did is the best idea, right? The, 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 really, the only thing you do is if you really want to make sure you're very successful at being an owner-operator and your business is going to survive the first two years, is you're going to have to prepare your family and your home life along with everything else. You're going to have to have no debt. No debt at all. I don't care. Truck payments, wife's car payment, nothing. If you really want to make sure that you're going to be able to build your business into something successful and grow, such as like Tim, Tim Gentry and everything, uh, you're, you're just going to have to have no debt. It's the only way to guarantee that you're, you're going to be able to survive anything that, that comes at you because you're, you are going to have, you are going to have shit happen. It's just, it's just going to happen. You're going to have rainy days. You're going to have the, the catastrophes that you never thought would, would happen. Uh, you're going to have days that you sit and are stuck with a load that you can't get off your truck. You're fighting with the broker. They're fighting with you about claims and everything else. It's, it's just going to happen. But anyway, I don't know. We're probably going on a, a 20 or 30 minute montage of me just ex trying to explain that you're not going to be able to probably increase your revenue. As much as you want to, it's just not going to happen. You're going to have to cut back on costs, whether that be at home, whether it be here. And if, if you simply don't want to do that, my suggestion is get out now. Sell the truck. Get out now. Uh, maybe you're upside down. Uh, you know, <laughs> it, it might be worth your sanity to just let the truck get repoed. And sure, if you can afford to pay it while working a company job, sure, pay it. Try to set something up with your financee to get out from underneath the truck and, and not have, you know, an actual repo placed on your credit. It is possible to do. But, but for the most part, if you're expecting to, to stay, stay in this in the long haul and actually have a business, like, heck, I, I really, even though things are really bad, I do have some money saved up. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go down there, but it, it, it's, it, it, the, the, it doesn't take long for that to disappear with the amount of bills I have, the amount of debt, uh, truck payments and stuff. It would not take that little nest safe that I just built up in the last couple of months of just constantly running to disappear. It really wouldn't. And even even through all that stupidity in my head somewhere, I feel that I can maybe purchase another truck and hire a driver. Uh, it's just you just it's that's not gonna it's probably not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. It's delusional thinking, really, because like I said, look at all the problems I have now. Look at everything that goes wrong constantly for me. And now I'm going to try to expand again. And in 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 the volatility of this market, it's it's a very dumb idea. But hey, that's. That's how just how some people work and how how technically most entrepreneurs work. But all right, we're done. I'm gonna get on down the road. I'm on.